I love you so much. No, I love you so much. Hi, community of awesome. I'm Ava J, and this is Bookish Pixie. So it's Valentine's Day, and I couldn't not do a Valentine's Day related vlog when the vlog schedule fell on actual Valentine's Day. So let's talk romance. Writing a romance, whether it's a subplot or a bigger part of the plot, can be a little challenging sometimes, so today I'm going to share some tips for writing convincing romances. So here we go. First, generally, avoid insta-love. I say generally because there are exceptions to every writing rule, so don't forget that, but also, most readers don't really like insta-love. The reason readers don't like insta-love is, is because it's usually not realistic. While I won't say that there has never ever been a person who fell in love with someone else upon first glance, it's not really the way most relationships start. Using insta-love also cuts out a bunch of character development, and the time that you could be using to really let the readers and the other characters get to know each other you're instead having them immediately fall in love and ready to sacrifice their lives for each other immediately when you've completely cut out so much potential for character development. And so love is often seen as cheap or lazy writing, and while there are exceptions, you generally don't want to take this shortcut. Second, give your characters time to get to know each other. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, in order to create a romance that feels like it could be real, you need to give your characters time to get to know each other. Basically, don't rush into the relationship. As I said in the previous point, Giving your characters this time will allow for a lot of character development so that not only are the two characters bonding, but the readers are getting to know both of them. Third, consider why your characters like each other. This is actually a point that a critique partner taught me while reviewing one of my manuscripts. They asked me, why does the love interest like the protagonist? And I realized I had no idea. Answering this question is not only great in terms of making your relationship feel more realistic, but it's also great in terms of character deepening. It really forces you to look at both characters and consider what it is that the other character likes about them. Fourth, remember every relationship has ups and downs. People in real relationships don't always get along or agree with everything. Neither should your characters. Giving your characters ups and downs in their relationship will not only make the relationship feel more realistic, but it'll also just make it more interesting because you'll be putting more tension and conflict into that relationship rather than everything just always being fine. Let those ups and downs interact with the plot and let it cause problems. If you can mess with the characters' relationships in a way that also messes with the plot, you can create some pretty interesting situations. And fifth, not every relationship has a happily ever after. The only exception to this is if you're writing category romance, then yes, you need a happily ever after. But otherwise, it's not really a requirement. People break up and characters can do that too, and sometimes they don't end up with each other again, and that's okay. Okay. Most of the time, when you write a romance or a romantic subplot, the characters end up with each other in the end. But I'm just saying, it's not a requirement, so if you want to break the norms and try something different, you can do that too. Remember, a lot of fiction is about reflecting reality, so if we only ever show the reality of two people meeting each other, falling in love, and ending up happily ever after, then we're not really reflecting all of reality. So if you want to try something different with your character relationships, Go for it. That's what I got for today. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and comment, and I'll see you guys next week.